What is up guys? Welcome back. It is 2021. We made it. I'm busy with a whole lot of stuff. Busy with engine builds there. The stuff I can't really talk about because it's race car stuff. BM parts there. As you can see, the BM is not here. The time has come. It has finally come. We are going for the roll gauge. But first. I've got to go get some ratchet straps to strap this puppy down and then we're off to take it. Alright, we are on our way. It's been a bit of a rush this morning because I had to go get some ratchet straps. My other ratchet straps seem to have found legs and are no longer with me. So, we are on our way. We're going to go and meet the guy who's doing the cage for us. And I see there's some police up ahead. Fantastic. <laughs> Anyhow, we're going to see the guy who's doing the cage for us and then we'll take it from there. Hello, mom. We're here, we've made it. We've offloaded the car, standing over there, and now we're gonna have a look inside. This is the E200, 
Yeah. And it's going to be my pension car. This used to be Bernie Mariner's car. He was a motorsport manager of Ford and at Opel and at VW. He's the only that ever gave me a job. And when he died, I bought the car from his son and I said, that's going to be my pension car. It's only got 76,000 kilos on the clock. So it's still brand new. The Volvo, <laughs> it's got a full race 302. I've just changed, I took the C4 box out and I put the AOD in it. Because the C4 box was shit. Uh, 100,000 rands with the internals on here, it's in to 9,000 rands. And I got it all on E46 BMW suspension. All BMW suspension. Even the tunnel, the seats, the dash, the everything. BM dash? Six all E46. Seven. Even the tunnel is E46. Wow. I even cut the tunnel out the BM and put it in here. I said, wow. why didn't you just put the V8 in the BM? Because the BM <laughs> was riding. I said, no. <laughs> That's too easy. You you wanted to keep the Volvo. And then yeah, and then I made the, the pipes around the seat brackets and stuff so yeah. that we can still do that. Okay. And that's just the AMG lab belt that I put in there just for me. Sure. And, and then you, I put the roll cage in just like for a, for stiffener. Okay. Just to stiffen the body up a bit. It's got two two hundred cc motors, so it's a four hundred cc. Nico's my uh, my test pilot. Yeah, he drives this thing. Okay. So I only work on it and stuff. And uh, yeah, I'll let him drive it. Gonna put yeah, we're going to put off road tires on. on and we're going to ride it on the dirt. Oh wow. Yeah, Test. we're not only going to ride it on tall. We're going we're gonna <laughs> to go to Benoni and we're going to ride it there. <laughs> Next but just the for fun day, just for fun day. Yeah. This is a digit R400 I bought. Because I wanted to use the engine, Yeah. I was going to build a, a supercar with a 400 motor with gears and everything. Oh, wow. But my own chassis and everything. That's why I bought this quad to use the bits and pieces. The motor started when I went and fetched it, now it doesn't start. What we're going to do is, once we've got the road tires on the go-kart, we're going to push this thing to the back, we're going to put petrol over it, we're going to burn it, we're going to ramp over it. <laughs> and we're going to make video. This is a 1948 Anglia that I bought not so long ago, also from my brother in PE. Very nice car, on the road, licensed everything, and it's also got a 302 in it. Magic car. Magic, magic, magic. So Pete, just tell us a bit about your history. You said you worked at Volkswagen Motorsport? Let me give you a quick rundown. In 1982, 1981, I started at Ford Motorsport as an apprentice mechanic. We worked there for three years at Ford Motorsport. I was only one. Where we, where, no, we, zero. where we, when Ford closed down, uh, me and the boss man, the owner of the Merc, and his son owned this. We went to Opel together. We were there at Opel Motorsport for seven years. Uh, Delta Motorsport. And then Delta Motorsport, it was Opel dealer team. It was yes. all, we raced the Group N cars. We done a bit of rallying and, and, and. Were you involved in the, in the, not the Calibras, the, the Calibra project, the V6? No. The no. V8? I was already by, I was already by VW then. Oh, okay. You were, with you with the okay. Audi. We know where that car is. We know where the car is. We found the Calibra. It's going. Um, okay, then uh, we had shit at, v at, 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 at Opel. Um, things started to go downhill a bit. And then me and the boss man, we moved together to VW. Okay. I was at VW Motorsport for 17 years. Done rallying. I prepared Sorrel's little rally car for a year, the Golfy. And then he went back to Ford. And then uh, Yanni and, and Ibitza, they came there. We had the little four wheel drive Golf 2 which we rallied for two years, and then we started uh, the Sasquatch series. We started with the Jetta, which wasn't very successful. We then got the Audi 80, and in between we raced the big modified West Bank Audis, yes. the five-cylinder. Yes. Yeah. First the 10 valve, and then the 20 valve. And that was, that uh, was Terry that was, Moss. That was good um, racing, Terry and Chris. Yeah, Chris Everdeen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then we done that, and then we went on to touring cars. We first had the little Audi 80, which wasn't very quick because it was like a matchbox, it was square. And then when we got the A4 shape, uh, yeah, then we dominated. We, we took all the titles from Opel, from Nissan, they were going quick that time. And uh, yeah, we won a couple of championships with that. And the international driver we used to get, Frank Bieler. Yes. He used to come down and do all the testing and some of the races with us. And I worked for them for 17 years, built all the S2000s. 
started the Polar Cup series, me and Andre van der Watt. And you, you were involved with the fabrication side? That's mostly. me, that's me. Okay. I never ever done mechanics. I, I done my apprenticeship and I qualified as a motor mechanic. And after that I taught myself to weld and to bend pipes and to do fabrication work and aluminium welding. Okay. And self all taught and uh, yeah, that's what I do now. Fabrication work, roll cages. That's my that's my story. That's what I do. And then, how long were you at uh, VW Motorsport on the Polo? Seventeen years. Seventeen years. Seventeen years. From 1991 to 2007. 2007 February, I resigned, and I've been on my own ever since, okay. doing my own thing, and I've been here in Joburg now for five years. Basically, when VW Motorsport closed down, that was my bread life. Okay. I'm because I was still doing all the Polo Cups, chases yeah. and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, when they closed down, um, work went a little bit. I had a little coffee shop in Utrecht that I was running for about sure. two years, which was good. Uh, the coffee shop looked off me and everything. I was still doing some racing and then I met Anton Roo at Valcom and he asked me to build a aluminium tank for his split window Kumbi he was building. The one with the Porsche and with the four wheel drive. Yes. So yeah, we got involved with that and me and Nico finished it. We built that Kumbi four wheel drive with a 3.6 or whatever yeah. Porsche yeah. engine in four wheel drive. Okay. So we done that and uh, then when Anton bought RS, he phoned me and said, Peter, I can't do this by myself, I need you up here. So okay. So 10 to 1, the Polar I raced for, I don't know, the, the second one, even even the first one, because the first one I raced in class, he was ex uh, Polar Cup Shell, but the second one was my most successful car. So 10 to 1, you built both of those cages. Obviously, obviously. Because yeah, yeah. I think in the, in, the, in the 13 years I was involved with Polar Cup, I built over 300 chassis. Oh, wow. Because the O's were finding out if they smashed the chassis, if they had an accident and they bent the chassis rail, it was cheaper for them to buy a, a, a chassis from me with a roll cage in, painted to their color with bonnets, boots and bumpers and doors. Wow. I was selling them for nine grand wow. when I was still down there. Yeah. That's what they were selling them for. So, yeah, we tried to keep it simple, like yeah. Van said in his book. Well, thank you very much, Peter. I look forward to the, uh, you know, the finished cage. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll see you, I don't know, in a few weeks or a month or whatever. But yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, what I'll do is I'll, I'll also take photos as I'm going. Yeah, please. Um, uh, when I weld the plates in and then before I put the pipes in and stuff like that. So I'll be taking photos and short little videos and then I will send them to you as I'm going. That's great. But uh, yeah, uh, a, a roll cage like that will take me two days. Oh wow. Two days and it's done. <laughs> so yeah, okay. the time is making the templates and getting Van der Linde to bend the pipes up and yeah. and and. Yeah. So that's the awesome. story. Well, thank you. 100%. So I've just dropped the car off. I'm on my way back. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited, man. What's that's some just some magnificent history, and it's great to meet people from our South African motorsport past. And these guys have been around and been involved in, in um, you know, those in the motorsport scene that I was watching when I was growing up, which made me get involved in um, in motorsport. So, what an amazing experience and amazing stories and. I need to try and corner some of these guys and get some of their stories on, on um, video so we can share them because it's just amazing and it's it's a time of racing that I don't think we will see again because globally it was it was just a different time we're talking mid 90s to late 90s in rally you had the the Subaru versus the Lancer um, rivalry in South Africa we had standard static group N racing it was massive massive manufacturers spending huge money um, in production car racing then we had globally you had the super tours which was just exploding and of course in South Africa we also had the super tours so um, just amazing to speak to people that have been involved in that and yeah it's like really really amazing so Thank you guys for watching. That's going to be it for this episode. This is part one. Part two, we're going to fetch the car, get it back, primer it. Then we're on to something really special. So thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys next time.